Hello again, everyone. This is Adam Iniquity. Uh, I'm here today to show you or do a Photoshop tutorial on how to photo manipulate a few things uh, in my style, um, the, the dark alternative, I guess. Uh, today we'll be doing some uh, photo manipulation, blending images, uh, changing colors, uh, eye color, hair color different things like that. So it might, the video might go on a little bit longer than I expected it, but you should learn some pretty good stuff out of this. Um, Alright, first off, I started here with a, uh, well that was weird. Um, this base image, which is just a stock picture of me, um, that I had deleted the background from. So it's just this, and then I made my own layer for backgrounds, just white. I'll show you how to delete backgrounds later too. But um, I made sure that it was adjusted to RGB, not CMYK. CMYK has more of a, the colors in the palette go flat, I would say, sooner. So it's more for like vector art where you're going to use solid colors that uh, get reproduced. Like vector art is different than pixel art, real quick lesson. <laughs> Um, in the in the sense that you can reproduce images in vector art, you can break them down, you can blow them up, and they won't get distorted. Whereas they will if it's pixel art. You can't just put it to any uh, size that you want without distortion. But the colors in RGB are richer. Oops. So that's what we're going to be using, and I have it set to. 16 bits, not 8 bits, because the more bits, the bigger the file, but it gives you a uh, richer quality. So, go ahead and uh, first off, we're going to start with the eyes, I guess. Take a lasso tool um, of your choosing. I'm going to use the polygon, I guess. Make sure that your image is selected and unlocked. And we're just going to Go around the eye a little bit. And if you hold shift, you can add to your selection. So we're just going to do the other eye. And then when you have both of them selected, you right click and you can make a new layer via copy, cut, or just whatever. So we're going to do copy. And that'll make a new layer, just the eyes. But your old layer will still be there. So now you can fuck around with this, and if you screw up, you'll have a, the original to go fall back on. So, um, you know, best bet would be to make two copies of this, actually. Yeah, we're going to duplicate. <clears throat> and if you want to not get these confused, you can rename the first one. Um, we'll name it Shadows. And the top one, we're going to name Color. Cool. And what we're going to do with the color is we're going to change the blend mode to Color. We're going to go down to Shadows here. And we're going to take your color dodge tool and we're going to just brush it around the iris. Different opacities will help because it gives you a variation in the color that you get from the eye, so it's not a solid color. So it doesn't have to be perfect as long as it's within the line. Okay. We're going to go up to our color layer. We're going to pick whatever color or close to color we want. Let's do. Let's see what this picture look like. This looks like a green. Well, this will work. Make sure you go back to your brush. And then paint on the color layer between the iris, where you just use your brush. Uh, your, um, Color dodge tool, sorry. And you can just go around once because we can change it if it's not dark enough. Let's 
to make sure you get a solid fill. And then we're going to go back to our shadows. We're going to take our color burn tool and we're going to darken the iris. Or not the iris, the pupil. So it blends. We're going to almost going to go pitch black with that. We're going to make it smaller and go around the outside of the iris. And then while we're here, we might as well go and outline the eye itself a little bit. To give it a, that kind of dark look. You don't have to do this part, but like I said, this is being done my style. If you have choppy edges from where you cut it, you can always erase those now. Just around with a soft, uh, soft bristle, make it a little bit larger and just erase around the edges and it'll blend it. You're gonna have to do that to the color image too. Oops, why is that a hard? Oh, make sure that your uh, airbrush is on too. Go back a little bit since I screwed that up. And then just feather out the edges. Another thing you could do instead of erasing this is you can uh, you can just select the layer itself and go to filter, blur. Gaussian blur. I'll show you more about this later. But, um, just increase the blur a little bit. Actually, you're going to want to first uh, just select the edges real quick. And then press Q, it'll bring up your mask. Then you're going to want to go to um, Blur and Gaussian Blur. And then you're going to bring it up until it blurs it, feathers up the edges enough to where it blends. It's usually around, depending on the size, between 4 and 9 pixels. Just uh, click OK, and then press Q back. And then you can just delete it. And then Control or Command, whatever you're using, Mac or PC. Uh, Control D or Command D, deselects. So then you get a clean kind of blend without having to erase. Um, anyway, what was I doing before that? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm so bad at getting sidetracked. I'm going to go to the blend or the burn tool, and we're going around the edges of this. And that's how you change eye color. If you decide you want something different, you can, uh, or you want them to pop a little bit more, you can go to your shadows here and uh, select your dodge tool again. Just kind of go in your white part of the eye like that.
the back to color, select white, just kind of fill it a little bit. Go back to your shadows, select your mixer brush, real small and soft brush, brush, just kind of blend a little bit here and there. Then your eyes kind of pop out a little bit more. Just keep messing with that until you get the, the desired darkness pop. You can darken the lines around it. Um, you can select your color. If you go up to image now, it'll uh, some brightness contrast it to make it stand out even more. Um, I think it's all right where it was. And then if you go to adjustments, uh, hue saturation, you can change the actual color that you made the iris. Um, make it red. So red's kind of cool, if you're going for the demonic look, I guess. But I like the green, so we're going to keep it there. Okay, next thing I want to show you, how long has this video been so far? I don't even want to check. Um, I'm going to do a cutaway. Um, I'm going to want to... I have a folder for my photo modifications. It's all just various textures. Um, because everything with photo manipulation is about blending of layers, that's the key. So what I have here is a, uh, where is it? In my portfolio here, I have stock images, and then various textures, and this is just, could be anything from like, there's a wolf that I get the fur texture from, waves for water, this is a piece, piece of parchment paper I found works good for um, bone, Clocks. Uh, what I use most often is uh, this tree bark with the big furrows in it. This makes good for uh, cuts and tear away, dead texture. This is like uh, a leaf. Uh, <clears throat> what else do I have? Torn flesh is just a bit of rust. So um, I'm going to show you the tree bark one, I guess. You're going to want to get a stock. Uh, image from Google or whatever, some tree bark. And then you're going to adjust it image-wise to 300 so it fits the same as your stock image, or the image you're working on. You're going to grab it with your move tool and pull it over and drop it on top. Um, okay. Whoops. It's because this image, you want to make sure everything's the same. This has got to be 16 bits to, as well. I save it. Yeah. All right. And then I'm going to bring it over. Once everything's the same, drop it down and go to image or edit rather, transform, scale. And then we're just going to bring it to the size that we want it. That'll be alright for now. Decide now while you have this out uh, in free transform uh, which way you want the cuts to go by rotating this. Make sure that this layer is on top of everything else so then it'll show through. We're going to say right here my face is going to get cut up a bit. I'll do the same. I don't know why I said it's preference, but... Alright, then we're going to go to tr this transform tool. If you don't have CS6, I don't think this is there. So we're just going to go back up to edit, down to transform, and select warp. And now you can pretty much bend the image around the curvature that you want, which is going to be my cheek here.
Come on, there we go. And you can kind of bend the grooves to be the cut that you want. All right, once that's selected, hit the check mark or simply apply it. Then you're going to go to color burn. And there's different blends, darker color, multiply, darken, whatever you want. But I find color burn works best for uh, the look we're going for. And then you're going to uh, blend it by changing the opacity, lower it a little bit. And then erase around here, around the edges, so it blends in with the skin. And then we're going to uh, go to Image, Adjustments, Brightness, Contrast. Bring the contrast up, brightness down. It gives you more of a bloody look. Contrast up, or brightness up and contrast up will give you more of a skin thing. We're going to go for Severe. This is hurting my face, kind of. Yeah. And we're going to go to Adjustments, Hue, Saturation. This is where we can adjust uh, little, little parts of it. burn tool and go around the edges of this or base image sorry around the edges and okay black where you think it's necessary. Oops, brush. Take your uh, clone pattern on the base layer and select a portion of your skin to get the uh, texture from. And uh, brush that in.
Okay, and then, uh, whoop, I keep doing that by accident. Back to your brush tool, you can make a skin color. Um, pull a skin tone out of there, like that. If you want to add blood to this part, you could always add, uh, get a red, dark blood color, whatever. Airbrush, real large. You can set this as a different layer if you'd like. It's a new layer. And we're just going to brush around the edges. Because I'm sure if your skin is bleeding, if it's rendered like that, then it's going to have blood. Take some black line. Whoa, whoa, stop. This computer is screwy. It's screwy. <laughs> Not screwing with me. Alright, solid brush, real small. Just put tears in the flesh, I guess. To outline what you're doing. Zoom in on it and clean up the lines. You can do this really however you wish. This is just how I do it. Color blend tool, mix a brush. So. And then just kind of blend it until it works to your liking, I guess. And 
make shadows on the inside, with some dark red. Maybe a little bit of black, real light. 35 opacity, it's just to outline again. But you don't really want definitive lines. And that's how you blend images, I suppose. <laughs> you could always go over it again, just to make it look more realistic. Do the same thing. Layer, per image, transform, scale, burn down. Go roughly over the same spot, or you could put in different spots depending on how bad you want to mess my face up, or your, your face. Okay. Going to multiply. That gives you a more defined look. Bring the opacity down on that a little bit. Make sure it covers the whole thing. Apply the transformation. And then just erase around the edges again. And then you can go through and uh, continue to do this around the face as much as much gore as you want. Then you always want to blend the the best way to blend all these modifications to make it look like one solid image is lighting effects. Once you're all done with what you want to do, I don't know how long this video is. It's, I don't know if you guys like longer videos or you get bored of them. But for real quick, last thing I'm going to show you, I'm going to flatten this image again because I'm done with it. I'm going to change my hair color. Select your magic wand tool, click on something, hold shift, and it'll keep adding to your click until you get all of the hair selected in the picture. It really helps when you have a white background to work with. It's going to suck if you have to work through backgrounds. But this is also, coloring it here is also where you can delete your background. You get basically all that you want, all that you can get with this tool. Oops. If there's a lot of it like this that you don't want, you didn't want selected, just press Q and it brings you into your mask. And at this point, if you bring in a brush, the brush only has two colors, black and white. And you can use your soft bristle brush, black, when you color it on, this, it leaves a mask. It's kind of like painter's tape. But if you erase it, Use your eraser or tool or whatever. Um, it takes it away. So you can basically go in with the fine details and get what you want out of this and what you don't want. And if you can't get it all because you're using a mouse, that's okay too, because you can use the Gaussian blur like we did before. And it'll give you a kind of a seamless looking um, blend. So you just want to do this the best of your ability.
Remember, if you're changing your hair color, change the eyebrows too. <laughs> so it doesn't look like you died. Places that I didn't mean to. Anything you want covered. I'm going in with a hard brush just to show you that you don't need to be deadly precise with this. Let's get basic. You can use this technique to change colors of anything in your picture, too. So I have some hair to deal with. Once you get it mostly done, once you get it mostly done, you can go to the top here, filter, blur, oops, blur, Gaussian blur, and uh, just kind of move it until it blends your hair with the mask. It kind of feathers the edges. Okay. And then when you get out of that, with Q, press Q, um, you have your hair selected and only your hair. So then you can go to hue saturation. Oops. Hue saturation and change your color. Black. Greenish kind of um, whatever you're doing with this, I guess. No, I'm just gonna go with the flat black. That's so my hair's brown. Okay, cool. Then you can go to uh, brightness contrast, make it stand out even more. And do whatever you feel necessary to your hair. Um, then just deselect that, and it should be pretty decent. And when you have everything that you want done with the picture, the last step that really brings it all together is flatten your image, make sure you only have one like I did. Then go to render lighting effects. And then we're going to do some, you have three options. You have a spotlight, point light, and infinite light. Infinite light is kind of like a, what we have here is spotlight. Infinite light replicates the sun, spotlight replicates the spotlight, and point light just has one focal point. So you're going to want to kind of use your lighting to blend your image to make it look real, I guess. You can make this as uh, minute as bringing the uh, density down. 
Oh god, my computer's lagging out. Okay, bring the intensity down. So it's just a minor light on the top of the eyebrows. And an uh, infinite light. And then you'll have different uh, focuses, I guess. And once everything's under the same light, it's kind of like a escape, a soundscape or something, or a, you know what I'm talking about? I don't know. It's hard to explain. Yeah, I'm going to call this quits because my computer is going slow, but you get what I'm saying. I hope. Color really blends everything. Or the lighting blends everything. Throughout your image, you can also add lights, like on the eyes, to make them pop out more or whatever. But that's that. That's uh, some simple photo manipulation edits. I uh, hope you guys can put some use to. Um, I don't know. I found them helpful. So, uh, like, if you do, like I said, if you do anything with these, let me know, and uh, let me know what you're doing. I'd like to see some art coming through my way of uh, influenced off my videos. That'd be pretty cool, I think. Um, so feel free to subscribe to my YouTube channel and like or comment on these, and I'll keep making them. Um, add me on Facebook to follow updates, and uh, thank you again for watching. This is Adam Iniquity, and this is Photo Manipulation Techniques for the Dark Alternative.